I've been using this homemade belt sander for five years now, and in this video, I'll show you how I built it. The drive pulley is going to be 8 centimeters in diameter, so I'm just making a whole bunch of circles out of plywood that size. I'm going to glue all these together on the shaft, and to keep them from spinning, I want some kind of a keyway in there. Now I have to cut that cylinder perfectly round. I'll spin it over my table saw. It's taking quite a bit of tweaking, but the shape I actually want is for this to have a bulge in the middle, and that'll help the belt track in the middle. I'm going to try to coat this with silicone. I made the idler drum the same way, except the discs are smaller and the shaft is also smaller. I also had to slightly modify my jig for rounding it because the diameter is smaller and the shaft was shorter. Let's see if I can get those pieces of inner tube on there. They still need quite a bit of stretching. These bearings are a 32mm outside diameter, which luckily makes for a tight fit in a one and a quarter inch hole from this drill. These two things form the sides, and then in here we have a cross brace here, and another one here, and then we have this piece here, and then this part fits on top of here. This funny part which pushes this part out that way, and then we have the pieces here for mounting the bearings, and on top of all of that we have this part here, of course the rollers are here and here. The roller is about three millimeters higher than this piece of wood which is about where I wanted it to be. This part goes on here and that needs to be square. I start by drilling pilot holes for the screws and then I drill a larger hole for the shank, I countersink them, and then I drive them in with the drill. This cross brace goes in right about here. Now this part is going to go on here, and then this part goes on here, and this goes on top of here like so. But to not wear out the screw threads too much, I'm using some screws that are shorter and smaller than the final ones, just to hold it together while I work things out. And again, I'm using smaller, shorter screws because this is not the final assembly. The idler roller is going to mount here, I just cut out some wooden bearing blocks made out of lignum vitae and I'm going to screw these in place before I drill the hole through them. The bearing blocks need to be mounted to this part here so that this roller is going to be about 3 millimeters above this surface. When I first put this together I found the bearings very hard to turn and so I put a 3 8 inch drill in there and just sort of spun it around while tilting it to the side but it got caught so now I have a huge hole right here but uh, as it is I'm just going to leave it like that uh, if those blocks wear out with this gash I can always make new ones so I need something to push this out here and for that I've got this sort of lever thing so that pushes out here like this as long as something pulls on here 
And for that, there's a threaded rod with a knob on it here, and a nut that goes here. And to keep that nut from spinning, I made this block that the nut fits into. To control the tracking, I need to control side to side here, which is with a threaded rod through here. So I made this funny shaped block of wood, which holds the T-nut, and it keeps it from spinning. Well, I think I'm ready to try this with a sanding belt. What I'm thinking of is a motor right about here and then a box that fits around the motor something like this and a piece of plywood here that's going to be the base of the machine. I bought an aluminum pulley to go on here, but this pulley here cost $10, which seems a bit much for just a piece of aluminum. So I thought I'd experiment with making a pulley out of wood. And now a nail in here to act as a keyway. I want the size of that pulley to be quite smooth so it doesn't wear out the belt too quickly. Where the belt touches the pulley is all end grain and that stuff is very tough. So this is how the base and the motor fit together. I need to mount that motor on there. Now I just got to tension that belt by moving the motor to the side a bit and then tighten it up. So this is one orientation to use a sander but you can also use it as an edge belt sander if I just orient it like this. This part goes on here, but to make sure the air comes in from above and not through here, there's this part here.
my intention had been when I want to use it as an edge belt sander, I'd flip it around. But the problem with that is now the belt is moving this way, which might be hard to get used to. So I figure a better method would be to just flip it down like this. But that puts the controls towards the bottom. So I want to move the controls on this side because having the controls on the back while using it normally really isn't a problem. The belt tensioning mechanism works quite well and I could just flip it over to put the knob on the other side but this tracking mechanism is actually not ideal because it has a little bit of play in it and I always have to turn a little bit past so ideally I would have this always say pushing in one direction so that as soon as I let go of the knob a little bit it moves back. I have come up with a modified tensioning design and this is applying force asymmetrically and then I'll have a screw that pulls it this way and that way the tracking should be much more responsive. The belt part way on there, I can figure out where the normal position of the roller is. Put that down. These two strips of wood are going to form my wooden belt tension spring. And then we have this part here, pushes against here again with a hole in it to keep the uh, strip from falling off. And then the tension now pulls through here. This is a good position for the uh, belt tension lever. The tracking adjust knob is going to come through here, lined up here, so I'm going to have to carve a slot in here for that to go through. I had this part here to help hold this in place. But I've realized if I just put a bolt and a washer here, I'll have plenty of room for adjustment right there. Now with no longer having a part that goes on here, I'm just going to glue a couple of pieces of wood on here so it doesn't look like there's anything missing. I'm also covering up the holes that I have on the front so that you can't tell that the design was different at some point. Just right to countersink a number four screw. With the tracking problems I've had, every time the belt goes too far this way, it starts grinding into the wood. And to prevent the uh, sander from cutting itself apart, I added these two metal plates to catch the sandpaper. This belt sander as a regular belt sander is just about finished, but to make it usable as an edge belt sander, I need to make some sort of a base that I can tip it down on and then this goes on here and this will bolt on in a way that I can slide up and down and then the table goes on there so I can adjust that vertically. Now I need some uh, threaded knobs like this to hold this onto here.
I'll just leave these to dry like that because I can't very well clamp these pieces. Well, I think this machine is ready for some green paint. And now the sander is painted. And if I want to use it as a regular belt sander, all I have to do is just flip it back up. After five years of use, I don't see significant wear on the wooden bearings, and if they do wear out, they'll be easy to replace. No signs of wear on the wooden pulley here. I thought I had some cracks in it here, here, and here, but I realized that's just the glue lines attracting more of the uh, rubber dirt on there. I have had to add tension one time by moving the motor over a little bit. Now it's as far as it'll go, so uh, next time I need to add tension, I'll have to actually replace the belt. The inner tube on the idler roller has held up perfectly. For the uh, drive roller, it's in good shape except for one spot right here. There's a little bit missing and I think that's because if I'm sanding inside curves, I'm usually sanding right up against here so that part gets a bit more wear than the rest of it. And the wooden springs I had for the uh, belt tensioning were a little bit too thin so I had to replace that with a thicker one. If you want to build a sander like this, I also have a much longer, more detailed video series on building this. I also have a set of plans for sale on my website. <laughs>